over there as That's, well. It goes. Someone's yeah. gonna win. Yeah, exactly. It's guaranteed. Yeah. Very smart. Well, as we head into this one, Beast Coast, see if they decide to smoke out, look for a first blood. Hattori already heading across the map. And uh, the drawing is made. We'll see if they, it looks like they're set to run right into each other. Level one potential. We've seen some of those level one raises get some early kills here. Mm. We got, we got some on both sides. We got shards, right? We got a little bit of ogre just getting in there. We got crystal actually, maiden. Yeah, this is pretty scary. Yeah. For, uh, I think Beast Coast, the dire jungle is really scary to walk into. There's so many of these high grounds that you just have three different hills looking at you, but they kind of just pass each other. Yeah, they're looking for that safe lane right now on Beast Coast. Get a ward back behind the tower. We'll go for some courier snipes. And it looks like the battle might be up on the top side of the map. They did catch a quick little sight there. It looks like the PL. Yeah, I see Hector. He's just checking the ward, but Doing the he doesn't usual. know too much. Yeah. This is this could be scary for Hikori. They might drop their guard, assume everyone's in the bottom jungle, which is usually what the raiding teams do. They'll sit in their own jungle, hold hands, wait for the bounty together, get two, walk away. So, you know, the Shadow Fiend might walk up alone. Very last second. We will see. And heading down to the rune spot, they will show C Smile. Yeah, throws out a raise. <laughs> They're on to one, hits a second, in some trouble. The shards pushes them to the side. Everybody getting hit. A really good avalanche from C Smile. And he gets a little bit of separation. The clockwork, body blocking, finding the kill. First blood taken by Whisper. Oh, C Smile's still running. He's still getting chased and will go down. Yeah. Gardic also chased back behind the tower. Five stacks, six stacks, and it will be enough. So, smile denied for nothing. Oh, oh well, that was close. Well, Gojir also grabbing the bounty rune right there uh, as well. I'm going to get that battery salt off too, so. That would be great for Beast Coast. Could be worse. Lumiere died at least, so he got the mana back from the raises. It's always rough when you fight the bounty runes, you, you lose a killer too, you don't have mana on the Shadow Fiend, but the lane's kind of reset. Uh, the bat is very high net worth though. Yeah, if there's a way that you wanted to start off the game, it's, uh, particularly with the bat rider, this hero that's been so up and down. Game first blood helps a lot as everybody heads off to their respective lanes. We'll also probably want to keep an eye on this bottom lane, how Vitaly deals with K1. They uh, just get everything denied out from him or not. So the scary thing right now is Beast Coast, in their minds, they kind of pick two lanes. They got to pick the PL into the Enigma, they got to pick the Bat into the Shadow Feed. So the side lane should be draft wise, Beast Coast favored, but again, Hakori picks these heroes just because they're stable. You pick them, you always go even, you always have a good lane. And, and, and I, then, like, on top of that as well, I feel like mirroring in terms of, like, the game plans, it, there's a lot of very similar things happening here. We have, like, Ember and Tiny. They have a similar idea and concept of how they want to play, but everything's just, like, a little bit faster on Hokori's side. If, if all things go even. I mean, I'm seeing Shadow Fiend right now with more last hits than the entire Beast Coast team for a second. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a pretty good way to start the game for him. Oh. Yeah, I actually think uh, a lot of the, at least mid and top, are pretty good for Hikori. The Ember versus Tiny matchup's pretty nice for the Ember. The Tiny doesn't have any armor. The Shadow Fiend is generally just a good hero right now. The slow on the raises, especially with this Ogre stun, just lets him kind of build up at least two raises, if not three, every time. Of course, does need to be careful, like you said, with that Bat Rider. If you can start stacking up that Sticky Napalm, that's when things can go south very quickly. I'm also surprised to see what Whisper does with skill build. We've seen some bats start experimenting with going um, for flame break early. I've seen some 4-2-0 skill builds on bat where they don't even get firefly. Oh yeah. It's I could see him doing it for Shadow Fiend because it makes it so he doesn't have to commit his hero. When you have to commit your hero on Shadow Fiend, that's when it gets a little sketchy or slow, and one of you is dying. So at least if you go flame break, you could be happy if neither of you die. And then you have a, an ogre just sitting there the entire time with a stick as well. So unless Gojira gets like the full lockdown, a very frustrating hero to try and deal with when it costs you all your mana pool. As you can see, at least at this early going, K1 getting a lot of his creeps denied out by the Enigma, as you would expect. While up here, they're able to do some pretty good zoning. Lumiere, the lane in a very nice spot as they're just forced back and off the lane here. We'll see if they can maintain that equilibrium. As down bottom. bottom, Stinger caught in the shards and yeah. a couple quick punches. That's going to be the death of the CM. That is the Crystal Maiden experience right there. Like, she throws out a Crystal Nova on the Eidolons, things start whittling them down. And Theolacor just sees that one moment where she's too close to the trees, you're just dead. Like, PL's, you know, PL can get out, you can't. 
Yeah, I think this PL pick isn't so much of a we're going to crush the lane with the hero. It's more, it's good versus Enigma in the game because you yeah. don't have to commit. And it's also, he'll survive the lane. And sometimes just surviving is enough. Ooh, oh, wait, get the bottom. He didn't get though. it, no. Stinger comes in, throws out a Crystal Nova, not able to get the uh, the pass back in time. That's Second, that's that's that. that was the issue, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go, something happened. Oh, that's a classic. Well, does not get the bottle refilled. Mid lane, how's this looking to you right here? It's pretty even. Uh, it's only three CS. The CS doesn't matter too much in the mid lane. Being up 200 gold or 100 gold is... It sounds like mid laner propaganda. <laughs> I was like, the CS doesn't matter, guys. It's, it's, no, it's, fine. it's all about the XP, guys. <laughs> he has two more denies in the Ember. Exactly. Uh, I would be surprised. Both of the, the only thing surprising actually is Analog is going for a two-two-zero build right now. He has none in the Flame Guard, so he's already kind of gearing up to be this run around wow. hero. Yeah, very mobile. This Lumiere up top will get blocked in by Gojira. Battery assault combo together with the now Flame Great on to guard it. Can they bring him down? Couple more punches. They won't go so all the way. Yeah, he decides to oh. die. So, Whisper with the double kill. That's really big. That's the probably the first blood effect right there. It gives him mana, it gives him boots. He has so much more stats that he just can mana yeah. up. And now he's going to have Tranquils and Raindrop. Finish on that Batrider. That is a great start for him. And what they need. 15 and 4 right now on that Shadow Fiend. Let's see if they can keep this type of pressure on here. Because each time they've walked up to that lane top, it's been looking kind of rough for them. Beast Coast already off to a hot start. Yeah, and there's, there's so much pressure in this game too, right? Just yeah. on the players themselves. It's a best of one elimination. You don't want to go out yeah. one at the eye. Yeah, that is actually something we haven't really talked too much in terms of like the pacing that a game often takes when it gets these best of ones. You know, it's kind of the same thing as a game three occasionally TI for elimination where the game will often stall out. Like those riskier moves aren't necessarily made, but in a matchup like this where they know each other so well, they've played together a lot and they both have this sort of, you know, slightly faster paced tempo, I would say. I, I don't know if we're going to get that. I feel like we might still be playing some pretty fast Dota. You're saying the team with the black hole is going to win at some point. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's usually what happens. Let's see if it happens here again. And... Gardic caught underneath those cogs, couple more punches, and he is dead. Whisper dominating. He saw what he liked early, called for the pick, oh. and is running it. I love the drums too, right after, right? Keep that pressure up. This is, he can also go the bearing, which is really nice, but mm -hmm. this is the scary part of Shadow Fiend. This hero, we see it a lot as uh, he sits in his lane for 12 minutes, but now he's, it looks like he's gonna get kicked out probably relatively soon, and he doesn't really wanna jungle. He doesn't wanna rotate to the enemy lane, so it's gonna be a little scary to try to find a game for Lumiere. That was something you were just talking about back when watching that EG game that happens. They were up there and staying for a very long time. And if they can sort of elongate this laning stage and the Batrider keeps this type of momentum, things could start looking very scary indeed. Yeah, there were no stacks here for Lumiere. Thankfully, he's able to make his own just in time. Kills one camp, gonna stack up as well, so... Will start getting back on the board. And see Smile caught in no man's land. Slow down Avalanche to try and get a little bit of separation. But in the end, with everybody walking forward, see Smile, he's going to go down. It's a pretty big kill. This starts the Ember, Ember, you know, snowball right here. You always get started with one kill. And I think a lot of this pressure is going to be on Analog to kind of step up. Trying to just because of how his safe lane's going. Yeah. But that Cog's pushback is really nice. That could have turned into something big with the haste and then also level six on analog. And now, it, oh, if he gets caught here, this could be really bad. Does not have a ton of mana. Gets pushed back. The flame break. They're bringing in people to try and help, but Stinger there as well. Gardic underneath the Cogs is dead again. But that does make sure that Ember can get out of there. Beats his ogre a little. It's, he's in the situation where he wants to press slight, but he has no mana. He doesn't want to stick because he's full health, but a stick is full. It just feels a little awkward. I think they might be feeling a little pressure right now. And they probably want to start playing to the Enigma bot and try to pressure this tower because if they don't kick the PL out, he's going to be comfortably sitting in a safe lane where the Shadow Fiend's already kicked out, and you kind of want to break up these lanes as fast as possible for Hikori. Yeah, for now they're even, but if it stays this way, it's uh, certainly going to be start moving in towards uh, Hector's favor in this situation, so... Uh, likely getting Theolicor on the move as well, right? Like trying to get up to that level 6 perhaps. Obviously Tusk is one of the heroes that thankfully can get a lot done before level 6, but does have a big up on the damage there. Now we see Hector already has all his items queued for the next 20 minutes. He's got his Defusal, <laughs> Yasha, Heart. He knows what he wants. He's gonna buy what he wants. And uh, it's kind of what he needs this game. He just needs to be able to tank up at some point. The Tiny will go in at least in the early game, but he needs to be a strong hero on his own. Well, Theolicor uh, really wanted that bounty rune. Mm. 
He's not able to get it. Be denied out of there. Can't get it in time. And you can see these movements that keep on coming in. Clockwork being such a thorn in their side. Gardic just has to try and play bodyguard right now. But, you know, if, if they bring the Batrider in tow, both of those heroes will die. So props to Hakori to be able to keep it this close with how well this Batrider lane is doing. And now Analog moving into position. Finds him with the root, gets him inside. Spur making the move over, wants to try and play aggro here. The root, the lasso, oh. they brought everybody. They take him down and now chase for more. That was not the thing that they were hoping to happen with that invis rune. As the ogre will burn, no neutral need denied. Oh, okay, the too? that's a little something, but they will catch the Ilucor on the backside of this. The chase down continues and a pure Ooh. victory. Oh, still trying to maybe, escape maybe. the Ilucor, maybe? A possibility? Livid? Snowball? <laughs> Staying alive a little bit longer. He's hoping, but eventually the bat burns all. And all of this comes down to the Beast Coast offlane, I think. There's so much pressure right now. They Lumiere can't go bot. He can't go mid. He's stuck in his jungle and the clock runs at him. So they keep constantly feeling pressured. We have to help our carry. We have to let him farm. They keep making these moves. And when you make moves to your losing lane, it's... It puts a lot of pressure on your team because now everyone feels they have to go because you're not strong enough in a 3v3. That all started with them moving up to try and, and do that, to get their Lumiere. And instead, he just like TP's mid. He's like, oh, disaster. Yeah. I got to go find something. And he's spending so much time just running around. Thankfully, on the other side, uh, the Wraithback's almost done on the Enigma. So they will have a timing to actually kind of stop the damage because Beast Coast doesn't have a Wraithback fire on their team. The Batrider is going for Drum's BKB, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Oh, Gojira, getting a little crazy here. Dude, they're feeling it. It they're is under themselves. 10 minutes right now, Gojira. All right, relax. <laughs> He's ready to die. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> Doesn't notice me, please. <laughs> That's the call. Uh, man, and you just look at those farm levels, and Whisper has completely taken over this game. He has been the one that, you know, Beast Coast fans recognize as just one of the keys to the engine that is this team. Now, why does Batrider keep dropping all these games? I don't get know, a little man. ahead of yourself, perhaps. You know, you're still. That's, that's a fair point. A little disruptor esque. Feels really good when you're ahead, but the yes. second things start going the wrong way, you know. The biggest thing is a lot of people are picking physical damage right now, and if Bat can die in a BKB, yeah, he feels bad because he wants to be able to walk in with BKB, feel invulnerable, lasso you, and then you just watch as your carry gets taken away and killed. And in this game, if he takes the Shadow Fiend, I don't really see much. They have to black hole him, and you're black hole in the off lane. Right. If PL can get to the point where he's strong enough, then, you know, that might not be an option anymore. We'll have to see. Not quite level 6 yet on Gojira, but continuing to keep the farm going for K1. We can see the confidence of Hector. He's just going for the Yasha first. I think he knows how well his team is doing, and he doesn't really feel the need to be involved. So he's just not rushing the defusal. He's playing more, I'm going to play my game. I'm going to get my timings. And when I hit them, we're going to win. And I'm not going to worry about too much. And again, like, you just see Hikori. The other just farming with his Shadow Fiend. And yeah. It's, uh, and, and all those timings that you're hoping for with the Shadow Fiend lineup, thinking about, like, you know, the initial tower pushes and then hanging towards that first Aegis, with everything being so far set back because of the deficit that they're at right now. It feel, uh, feels very, very good for Beast Coast. He does have the Midas ready, so... There it is. Okay, up all right. Late game. Yep. <laughs> Midas uh, into more attack speed afterwards. Fine. <laughs> He's just so trying to be big. Blink Dagger's now finished for the Tiny. So this is kind of when the Beast Coast starts ramping up. The Bat has drums, the Tiny has Blink, the supports are hitting their level 6 timings, and I, I think this is going to be when they're looking to kind of close the map in on Hikori. And now, once the map closes in, only about one, or, one hero on their team can farm, and... Who do you pick? Do you want your Enigma to not be farmed? Do you want your Shadow Fiend to not be farmed? Your Ember always has to fight at this point. Yeah, you're like passing out items like one by one. It's just like whoever really needs it next. I, I think the other thing to consider here is if you're Hakori, you know that this timing is coming, but also are you going to be able to deal with it? Analog gets pushed back. They're keeping a little bit of separation here as he stole that DD away from the Ember. Slowed down, still chasing. They're throwing out the Avalanche, oh. trying to elongate this fight a little bit longer. Stinger up on the high ground, throwing out the CM ulti, not doing that much damage. And Gojira is just going to be the one that ends up going down. If this fight keeps going, they still have a lot left in the tank on Hikori. But Whisper moves in, and that stops the aggression. Wraith, Wraith back putting in work, helping out there, making sure nothing got turned around on them. Slowly advancing to the tower. 
And he probably can't go to the tire. Even Hector's going to show up. Oh, he finished the defuser, actually. Okay. There's a casual band of the Elven skin. Okay. Interesting. Someone made the call. Someone saw the inventory. Like, yo, yeah. oh, just slow down. We, we kind of need you. I think, I actually think Hector is kind of, oh, uh, I think when he plays Wraith King, he goes a casual belt of strength. Yeah. So, something about these items. The six agility, six strength. Well, and what I was going to say is that in this type of a game, too, Beast Coast has been here before many times in elimination matches on the international stage in front of a crowd. For Hikori, a lot of players that haven't had that type of experience, and I want to see how they react to that pressure. Uh, can they deal with this sort of strong timing that's going to come out with Beast Coast? You can see the Beast Coast doing another back-to-back -back smoke, so they're going to look for maybe this Tusk. They're trying to find the Shadow Fiend. That's the big goal, but... Yeah, and this is all while showing bad up Ooh. top, right? Toss. See Smile controlling, still has Snowball. Gets it out there. Vitaly moves into position. See Smile, he's in pretty far. Still holding on to that black hole, but with Analog in the air, they don't even need it. That was a really nice tumbler toy. Gets up the hill right before the Tiny catches him. I, I think it's a little forcing of the play. He feels a little bad that the Tusk survives, so he blinks on the high ground. And anytime you commit a little too far, especially versus the Ember yeah. and the Enigma, it's just so much damage when you're when you, you know, provide them yeah. a body. And I mean, Analog now sitting still with two more remnants as well as they pressure this tower, so very hard to grab. They only have to really watch for the Gojira angles, oh. but he gets right in there instead. Interrupts, nicely nice. played, connection yeah. for the kill, and Okori, all of a sudden, they are looking at like a crisp team. You know what those clockworks want to do, right? It's like you're approaching a tower, they want to find this like little angle in behind or from the side. Start off a nice support. fight. Yeah. It's probably the Enigma that he's looking for. Yep. At this point, taking that mid tower, could this be the turn that we're waiting for from Hakori? The Midas is working. It's happening. We'll see if they can deal with it. You still have an incredibly farmed Batrider and PL, though. Yeah, but where is he? <laughs> he's, he's in the jungle, man. Seven they're... kills were a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're playing for their time. He's looks like on Beast Coast, at least on the Whisper and Hector. He's going for the Defusal Heart. It looks mm. like that's probably his big timing. That's his GG timing. Yeah. Uh, Whisper, I think he just wants his BKB. He's probably just saying, let me get BKB. I can. They don't have much. It's, it forces a black hole pretty much every time he presses BKB. Yeah, he's trying not to be like the other bat riders, right? He, he does not want to start to beating ways lead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, so. Doesn't want to be that big old pinata that you pop and just start beating out of the sky. That's fair. Well, they're bringing over the Maelstrom right now for Analog, so they have more avenues to sort of spam out against uh, the push that will be coming their direction or just the team fight that might happen. And the thing to watch for here is still that gold lead, less than a thousand separating these two teams at 15 minutes in, but a very farmed dual core here. Mm. Yeah, I think as Trent was saying, since these drafts are kind of similar in what they want to do, well, it's not too much about, you know, oh, we're up a thousand gold, we're up two thousand gold, it's who, who's hitting the timings, because they yeah. both want the same timings. Both these offlaners want their BKBs or blinks. Both the mids kind of want these items that let you fight the males from the, the blink on the tiny. So right now, I think this bad BKB, they're going to instantly smoke on the side of Beast Coast. They're going to look for these kills. And this is this is the Beast Coast timing. So now we're going to look for a big fight. And you can tell, like, how passive it is for Okori because he's also just running around with his haste rune. You know what I mean? Like, they had haste rune, fresh maelstrom, and he's just like, yeah, we got to farm. Like, everyone else isn't ready. And they do get the 60-minute rune, though, which is really nice. They for found him right away. Catch, Abba, toss, dead, Gardic. Trying to salvage something here, running in Ooh, that's, easily. That's a juicy shards, though. Can they do this? Shards, block, stinger, there, control. A lot of damage. They do manage to take off that freezing field. Analog, hoping to get something done. A double kill from Whisper with that BKB. But can they get out after? Will Analog keep chasing this DD going? Connection on to Sea Smile. Whisper still in the area. Vitaly has that black hole ready to go. Push oh, back Anna. on to two and Sea Smile in some trouble. Gojira's off to the side. They don't even need it still. Wait, maybe a turn? Okay, K1, he's oh, decided to show up. The a couple quick bucket. punches. Can they clean them up? It looks like they will. So another trade to a piece. They feel so strong. They're like, oh, we can't die. We can kill them. And it's not wrong, but. Sometimes when you chase a little too far, that's when the other team turns it around again. Hector even shows up, so Beast Coast, five tiers together, one lane. Yeah. Hikori loses one. They can't be five. Their Shadow Fiend dies instantly. And it wasn't too bad for Vitaly, too, because he still gained like a decent amount of gold there at the end. So we take a look at the replay here. Just immediate jump, and they were ready. <laughs> Just straight up gone at that point, too. And uh, I mean, I like the TPs, though, because they, they know that they can fight in these situations, right? Like, that, that's a great situation for Analog. From the high ground, as an Ember with the DD rune, you can see he starts cutting through them like that. But they, they couldn't get Vitaly in quite at the start. And then he just ends up, like, walking after them because he was so close to his blink. Yeah, you can see uh, how Corey 
They they literally just want to hit their timing. That's all they need. Yeah. They need the BKB on the Shadow Fiend, I think, is their next big one. He's about 2,000 gold away, a little more. The Ember is also going for a BKB, but I don't know if they can wait for his. His is about 3,000. And Beast Coast, did, that was their timings. Right. That was their BKB on bat. So you see how strong they are. They just walk up into the tri or the duo camp, rather. And in a way, it feels like, you know, you're building up this armor on Hikori, and before it's fully finished, they're just trying to kind of poke him in the eye a little bit and start slowing them down as much as possible. Uh, and they're kind of making it happen right now, you can see. But still, incredibly close game. We're going to have to watch if uh, Beast Coast can keep hitting these timings, find a couple more pickoffs, and slow down Hikori a bit more. And one of the cool things about Bat versus Tusk is actually if you're lassoed, you can't get snowballed by the Tusk. True. So yeah. if Theo, he's rushing a blink, he has it already. So if he tries to save on these lasso initiations, it'll do nothing. Yeah, we got, uh, done. we got lasso, we got black hole, the two things, and chrono, the three things he can't pull you out of. So there you go. <laughs> Marcy can't fly there now. Her hands. That's are not, right. Yeah, her hands yeah. are not strong enough to go through. Uh, to go through. They, they were pretty magical before, <laughs> apparently. No longer. Smoke up, Hakori. They feel like they want to get going right now. Who are they going to run into? Illusions out first. Smoke does not break. Hakori going to run past it. It looks like Beast Coaster in position. Yeah, Smoke punch. breaks now. They find him. Snowball follow up, chase down, but the cogs, the pushback, interrupting Vitaly before the black hole comes down. Wraith pack is there, but are they in too far now? Avatar, Rumsey Smile can't get it all. Oh, no. That black hole, it was not what they needed. Analog will manage to disengage, but they lose their Enigma and Gardic. He is likely to fall yet again. Chase down, yeah, they got him. Beast Coast, they just read it perfectly. That was really nice positioning from Hector. He kind of stopped believing in himself for half a second, but he was perfectly in the trees trying to break the smoke with this ward. And Hokori was really fast. They catch him before his double yeah. or anything, but it's not enough. Yeah, it doesn't even feel like it's worth it. And plus you have the uh, the four staff backing up there from Gojira as well too. So he just, you know, he, he feels very confident if you got in a forward position like that. Just needs that one little break in the action to survive here. Unreal. And you can see, think about how different that would be if you just find that black hole on Hector. To be honest, they still might have been able to interrupt it pretty quickly afterwards. Tally's going to need to get that BKB. Really nice cogs. Just yeah. stops the, pushes the Ember, pushes the Enigma. Kind of breaks up the fight. Anytime the clockwork gets like very directly in the middle and pushes heroes out, the fights kind of get scary. Oh, of course, it's there to battle back and sort of uh, take a little bit of control here. A slight lead, but now that has gone over the way of Beast Coast. And we're hitting 20 minutes now. Everyone's starting to think about that Roche. Can do it pretty fast on the side of Hokori. Now ah, here's the Hokori timing, the BKBM shot off beam. It's yeah. all about the timings in this game. But yeah. Smoke up. They're gonna look to Roche as well. They're gonna move to top, try to get a kill into Roche. Hector, the exact same position now. Moving in, invis, but they see him. Oh. Stinger. Lots of TPs coming in. Whisper. He tried to get something onto the Tusk, but Stinger is already gone. Helio Core, they throw out the Requiem, trying to disengage with that Tusk. So support for support. Get Blink dead. tiny, he's thinking about it. Fancy smile. Won't jump for that one. A bit too dangerous. It's kind of where it hurts to do Black Hole in the last play. Yeah. Hit black Hole maybe maybe catches Hector, maybe catches the bat. But it's not the worst. They get a Crystal Maiden, they trade one for one. Anytime you trade kills and you're behind, you're always going to be happy. You're going to get more from them. This is the best of one Dota. It like, really is. It's just like a little bit scrappy. Everything's a little bit off, you know? There's like that one bad Black Hole, and so it throws off that timing. Everyone's a little bit full of the nerves here. They know this is your one chance, but also it just means that you only need that one single game. Yeah, I think one you can also see fight. the everyone's kind of just gearing up for the late game. Yep. Yeah. Everyone's ready for some 40, 50 minute game where you just at some point you either win or lose. Lumiere knew. That's why he bought the Midas. Yeah. <laughs> it was the time. Meanwhile, Whisper's looking at his tranquils just like, ugh. <laughs> you know? I yeah, I could I could have been a bad. Well, we'll see. As the game goes later, it can be very dangerous giving up the, uh, obviously, Shadow Fiend and Enigma against that. So Beast Coast likely to try and make some action happen. That flare just hit all of them. It's like <laughs> full vision of what they're up to. Oh. The Leo Court comes in, steals away that DD, but then loses life oh. for it. Guarding. Oh, Chase, hook shot. hook shot onto Analog, push back into the lasso, catches him. K1 trying to bring him down. Slide of Fist, can he escape? No. Analog goes down. A perfect fight in game one, just running in brazenly. Won't have to face any other retribution. Black Hole, again, just coming back off cooldown now. 
This is the timing we talked about. It's the heart on the PL. Yep. They're just gonna kinda walk down lanes, walk at towers. They don't have the damage. This Ember, you pick him to deal with the PL and then he has a bad game. You pick him to deal with the PL, he has a BKB. He doesn't really have the tools right now to deal with him. And there's too much HP. <laughs> oh god. Alright, I, I can't even handle that. Um, 4k gold lead right now for Beast Coast. And with uh, Gojira queuing up that shard here very soon. And as you guys said, the uh, heart done. It's going to be time pretty soon for another salvo of aggression uh, from Beast Coast with the top tier one tower taken and mid out of play. We'll either see if they want to go in towards Roche or just take a fight and take another tier two. Gojira plays a lot of Clockwork. I think this is one of his favorite heroes. And uh, the way he uses the shard is really nice. It gives you so much vision. And I yeah. think for Sakori, all you need is vision. You need to know where the Enigma is for Black Hole. All you need to do is catch the Shadow Fiend once at the start of a fight. Even the Ember will just die if to a last one. That's what we just saw, right? Like that one flare, just saw everything. They move in, they get the ward up on the high ground after that. It doesn't afterwards get dewarded by Hakori, but it doesn't matter. because right. you, want, you want to fight with it, right? Well, heading up to the top side of the map now is Beast Coast. They don't have their Tiny with them. But they can still make some plays, and Dyer anticipating that this might be the move that they're making. Skin in that little Death Valley area over there. Who are they going to find? Analog can remnant in onto Gojira if they want. Spot him at the beginning. They have so many forceps, though. Alephys, see smile, big avalanche. Where are they looking next? They're going to disengage. <laughs> little poke, little prod, little runaway. It's the classic. Same time, Hector, Hector is not going to show up to these. He's, no. he's farming, he has Manta finish now. He's just going to keep hitting the timing after timing. And I think inside of Beast Coast, you pick this hero on, I think, 23, and you're just feeling good. That was a nice little uh, illusion rune spawn for C-Smile. Could have taken a little bit more damage. It was likely going to be fine no matter what, but gets him out of trouble. And Beast Coast still feeling incredibly confident in this game. Four and staff done. They pushed them all downward. They watched them all run to that part of the map. They're all sitting around the rush pit right now, but not exactly the easiest thing for Beast Coast to take. Yeah, thankfully for Corey, PL's not the best rush killer. Yeah. Tiny and Bat also don't really do it, so... The objectives they're more going to force are either going to be taking jungles away from Hikori or just hitting the towers. And you don't even feel bad if you're not doing that because you're able to play your own game. It only feels bad if Hikori is actually able to make moves and catch heroes and be the aggressive ones, but every time they do something aggressive, it kind of gets countered by Beast Coast. That ward there, placed in a really sneaky spot by uh, Beast Coast, scouting all these movements right below this one. And so both teams with a lot of vision. With another flare too. Yeah. And just kind of harassing them. Yeah, this is seeing everything though. All these moves, and yeah, they, they realize, okay, there's something going on. They'll get the D ward. So a little bit better vision in the area now for Hakori as they continue to posture around this area. But as you said, Every minute that this continues without an objective being taken, we're seeing this lead grow by Beast Coast. You've got the Tiny on the bottom side of the map farming, and they are continuing to just outmaneuver them a little bit. They need that fight where Analog just goes off. You know, he gets to play Ember. Feels like he can't be caught, but like, that, that's gonna be hard, even with the BKB now. Just because he still has to contend with his like, hook shot into bat potential play here. And, you know, if he gets Lasso, the big save is pretty much Vitaly, but he's still into that BKB, you know? You're not going to be getting a snowball save, obviously, as we mentioned before, so you got to watch for some, like, great counter-initiation play. Gardic, right up close, has that Invis rune. Uh, but there is a sentry in the area, which is going to now get taken out by the Eidolons. Dude, there, <laughs> everything is so tense right now. You could tell these teams on a knife's edge. We have seen a lot of Enigma right now. This hero has won a lot of games by himself. Yeah. You know, he's, sometimes he's just the carry. You pick Enigma, he's the carry of your team, and this this game, he might have to be that, that player. He might have to carry his team just because I don't know if the Shadow Fiend is going to be able to mana first appeal. I just see him jumping for a black hole and missing from the double four staffs. It could be you know, scary. I'm watching the future. All right. Analog trying to burn through some of these illusions. Roche at about two-thirds health now. As Whisper still playing around with it, they have great vision from this clockwork. The Roche dance now begins. They're going to try to Roche, but it's always scary. You get it to low health, now Hikori is going to counter fight you. It looks like Beast Coast is just going to try to force this fight here. And it's up to Hikori whether they want to go or not. 
Since the illusion in first, we're still a little ways away from BKB Black Hole. But they're scouting. They have Jet the shards up. down. Got to be careful. Four staff number one keeping them alive. Lumiere thinking about walking in. Good flame break pushback control. SF going to pop that BKB. They got to get something out of this. And it's over on the other side. The Elio Core controlling and trying to take that Whisper. He's fine. He's out of there. But now no BKB SF. Really nice. Uh, Whisper got gone on. He didn't press his BKB. He just held it. And it he gets out. I think that kind of secures the roof for Beast Coast now. Hikori, they can't fight without trying to BKB. No. That's all I got forced back as well. Had to like blink out of there, so. Unable to find a counter initiation play and just needs to farm up his own BKB so he can try and get involved here, but Aegis now coming down and man Hector is a problem. This guy after that heart has been just buying some ultimate orbs, juicing up his hero a little bit, adding some stats, some steroids, and now I gets an Aegis to boot. I wanna see how much damage he's taken later on, because I feel like he has not been touched this game at all. Just like, like completely 300 alone. 300 damage? Yeah. yeah. At the laning stage? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly. You give a game like that to a player oh, like that. It's a problem. Whisper, they find him. Do they have enough to bring him down, though? Cogs, no. BKB is out. And instead, he might just turn and kill off Gojira. We'll see. Oh. Remnanting around a little bit. Awkward there. Is he going to die? No. Gets away. Analog just barely able to escape from that one. Oh, the instant smoke up as well. They just want to run in and take this territory now, saying they can't fight us. Let's go get some wards down. It was intentional. It was confidence. That's right. right. That's right. Yeah. Going in to show him. Waste a little time. No BKB now for the Ember, too, which is another thing to give Beast Coast that little bit of flavor at this point. This Foreman is left on the Aegis. They're doing the cross map rotation. Won't go for that courier snipe and instead wanting to follow it. Just, just gonna dodge, right? Try and lose as Dude. little as possible to this Aegis and get the BKB on an Enigma. They're literally following the courier. <laughs> it brings them right to Theliocor. And uh, we'll see if they can bring him down here. The chase is out, but actually they find Vitali. The Enigma goes down to Whisper as nice the blink. Tusk will get the blink out. Oh, Gojira. Oh, he's so good. He's actually so good on the clock. Okay, so here's what happened. So they run into Dilgor, and he's like, okay, well, we might want Tusk, but I'm going to go make sure that we get the Enigma kill, right? Yeah. So he runs over, makes sure Vitali dies, and Long then he's in between the two. K1 turns, Lumiere down low, still trying to pay him. He gets oh, the punches no. off the BKB out and away. Can he dodge through the trees? Might be able to. No. Hector chases him down, and now Gardic on top gives him the tip. Just like that, Hakori lose everybody across the map in the space of two minutes. That's the PL special right there. You know? It's not even. He's Aegis. Even yeah. if you win that match fight. Yeah. There's not much. Well, Corey may be feeling the nerves here in this best of one. 9k up and Beast Coast still with Aegis in hands for the PL. They're going to pressure for this tier 2 tower. What is the response? I mean, it still feels like it has to be that BKB black hole once Aegis is down. It's been waiting for so long as well. It's like trying to get this recipe done. It, it's all on the Enigma at this point. See, smile. They find another. Thelio Core body drop in. And everybody else needs to just run away because this is a heck of a gang squad he got with this bat rider. And you can see Gojira, he knows Black Hole is the way for them to win the game. So he's buying a Blink Dagger next. So he can always yeah. Blink, always hook drop the Black Hole. So your kind of situations to win the game are kind of getting limited with every single item that Beast Coast gets. Whoa, and look at this. Tier 3 tower. Hector, he's saying, I was ready to go. K1 takes down that Tier 3 tower. and. Oh, look at it. Chase jumps in. Topo Kangers forward onto this ogre. They do find the real one, but I don't know if they have enough to deal with them at all. He's still got the Aegis afterwards. The rest of his team is off on the other side and just keeps this chase going, taking down building after building and Beast Coast wanting to remain the dominant team here. They have faced him so many spots and been able to take down the Sakori lineup. Wanting to make it happen just one more time again. This is actually absurd, like how far all his allies are, but just, there, there's nothing they can do, right? Yeah. Look at that HP pool. Scotty's finished, Bachelor's gonna come out soon. Keep chasing. Building after building falling. They have to deal with this guy. All right, it's there. The smoke is ready. KB all the illusions hole. on him. But it's difficult. He's got no <laughs> blink for 12 seconds. You, you don't have black hole this. There's an Aegis. Yeah. They need to wait another minute. We got a minute. We got a minute. <laughs> you know? He needs a lot of prep time, okay? Yeah, He's got to okay. go all the way around. They have three sets of racks. Yeah, there you go. That's a minute of time. Yeah. I mean, they're just not stopping. There, there's no reason to stop. Hector will not be denied another set of racks going down, and they still have 45 seconds left. 
I mean, it, they have to get something out of this. Akori looking for an answer. Vitaly in the back. He's smoked. They need to kill him before they drop that black hole. Actor defusal onto analog. They just can't touch him. No damage on this PL at all. See, Smile spamming the notice me. We'll see if they stick around for the third set, but if they want, they can just back here. Brilliant play from Beast Coast as they are closing this one out in style. The spacing, the angles they have covered as well between their backline heroes. This is the, the PL, I think. Just the PL pick by itself is good for Shadow good versus Enigma. It feels so hard to find the real one. And when you only have limited, you know, limited amount of spells. Yeah, and so much of what they did in the laning stage too, just like bringing this all together for them as well, making sure that uh, they, they ruined uh, Lumiere's game, forcing him into this Midas, forcing him to the jungle, and slowing down the initial timing of that Roche, because, I mean, we saw when even they were like well ahead, Beast Coast still couldn't Roche, right? And the, that could have been such a great path for Hikori in this match. Well, they do know that that Aegis is down now, so Hikori ready to smoke out and move across the map, but there is another creep wave that's going to be coming in bottom. And it just looks like Beast Coast are ready. They, they know this is the only path that they can take. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough for them. Drop down the ward. CM in place. Sees that Splash pressure ward just runs. Place. Yeah. Oh, see that little timer man. and it's like full? You're just like, oh, I'm out of here. Everyone, uh, both teams know right now that Beast Coast wins with next Aegis. You can't yeah. black hole two, him two times. You don't have a pressure. So both sides are going to only care about Roshan right now. And for Beast Coast, they can even sit in their fountain and chill three minutes, wait for Roche. Once it's up, take it, win the game. But Hikori is always stressed. They're like, are they roaching? Are they holding our jungle? Where are they doing? Are they jumping us in our base? And there's where so are many these things. clockwork flares coming from? Right. Calculating the angle where they flew from. A little bit of trigonometry happening there. Trying to figure out what's happening, what's going on. Does have the blink with the four steps, so even Gojira is ready. You see him smiling and laughing. Yeah, they're feeling good. And why not? East Coast, they do not like these best of ones, I don't believe. None of the players do, but. It's one of those moments where it's so much tension on the line and feeling like they've got this one potentially in the bag. We'll see if that's true or not, though, because this next Roche fight is going to be where so much of this is decided, if Hikori can make any type of a comeback happen. Right. I think uh, he's my choice. He was originally going to go Ags after his Blink Echo, but he goes back for BKB and AC, it looks like. So I think he kind of realized that uh, Hector is going to just 1v5. All he has to do is be a body buff up his boy. Yeah, if you miss the tree volley, it feels pretty bad. Yeah, so he's just buying items for his team. Make it safe. Point. Well, K1 going in without the Aegis. A little bit of a bold choice here. Again, the danger. Oh my god, Gojira's way back there, though. He's ready for the backline jump. Analog, not there. And the lasso. They find and kill Theocor. He has buyback. Lumiere, they, they need it. They have, have everybody. I mean, even without the Aegis, they're right on top oh. of him. Cox pushback. What if I tell you, like, wait, there's a clockwork over here. And in the meantime, he jetpacks away from him. Hector keeps sending these illusions in one by one. Hakori. This, the smoke is there again. They got to find an answer. The Lucor again scouted. The smoke breaks. Ava toss. Connection. Gardic throws out a stun. Good punches from Lumiere. Can they bring down the tiny? They will. See smile dies. Oh, Analog Vitaly. jumps in. Tries to find a couple more. Lumiere looking, hunting. They want to find that PL, but it's not an easy ask to oh, get no. it. Oh, oh no. my god. Homie, that was an illusion. Oh, jeez. Oh, god. That's not what it's supposed to go. Hector, he showed up now. They have everything on top of him. K1 chase down Abyssal Blade there and Beast Coast, they're just too strong. So they run on through 19k gold lead, one last Rax, and GG is called. Beast Coast take the best of one and are gonna eliminate Hikori. Sending home their friends in the same region, but also their rivals, of course. The Korean team has been doing it so well lately, really impressing everyone, but Beast Coast say, you know. We were known as the gatekeepers once.